In this program, we're going to look at the combustion of metals, nonmetals, and hydrocarbons and alcohols. Let's start off with a definition of combustion. Combustion is a reaction in which an element or compound burns in oxygen. Now, some people do add a little bit more to this. Um, they do usually mention it's highly exothermic and rapid, but we'll stick with the, the first definition. It's simply the reaction with an element or compound burned in oxygen. Let's start off by looking at some metals um, that react with oxygen. So you've probably done an experiment in class where you took magnesium solid and combined it with oxygen gas, and the product of that reaction was magnesium oxide, a white solid. And um, to balance this off, we'll put a two here and a two here. It was quite an exothermic reaction, producing quite a bit of light as well. You were often told to shade your eyes to avoid looking at its glow. Let's look at another um, one, sodium solid reacting with oxygen gas, um, and it would produce sodium oxide, also a white solid. And to balance it, I'll need a Let's see, we'll need to go two here and a four here. You might recall from earlier units that these oxides, when mixed with water, produce bases. Generally speaking, if you want a highly exothermic rapid process, you tend to use metals from groups one and group two. Let's now look at the reaction of nonmetals with oxygen. And I'll start off simply here with, say, carbon in its solid form. Now I'm going to specify graphite um, in this case and combining it with oxygen, you'll produce carbon dioxide. And that's already balanced. Many of the nonmetals, though, don't tend to be monoatomic, but diatomic. So let's look at, say, taking chlorine, which is a gas, and burning it with oxygen. That'll produce um, Cl2O, oxygen dichloride, and it's a gas. Um, to balance this one, I think I'll need a, a two here and a two here. Um, although many nonmetals are diatomic, uh, some are somewhat odd in number. For instance, sulfur um, exists as a molecule with eight sulfurs in a ring. It's a solid and it too can react with oxygen gas to make sulfur dioxide which is also a gas. Um, and balancing this particular one, I think I'm going to need an 8 here and an 8 here. And again, from earlier units, you might recall that these produce acidic solutions. Now let's take a look at our hydrocarbons and alcohols. Now, one of the reasons hydrocarbons and alcohols are sort of grouped together here is if we take a look at, say, gasoline that's available at the, at the pump, um, you may notice this sign on some of the gasoline stations may contain 10% ethanol. Ethanol is an alcohol, and it's mixed with a hydrocarbon. Um, the hydrocarbon most commonly found in gasoline would have this particular formula. And our ethanol, uh, this formula. So we're going to look at the combustion of these, but what I'm going to show you can apply to any hydrocarbon and any alcohol. Let's start off with complete combustion. 
In complete combustion, we can recognize it because the products are CO2 and H2O only. Um, the carbon comes out as carbon dioxide, nothing else. In incomplete combustion, we may get carbon dioxide, but we typically get carbon soot and carbon monoxide as sort of unwanted byproducts. Those, um, and you'll get those instead of carbon dioxide. Now, you'll still produce the H2O. You may produce also small amounts of carbon dioxide, but as soon as you see the presence of these, we classify it as incomplete. We can also see the color of the flame as differentiating between the two. Um, we get a blue flame in the case of complete combustion, and we tend to get this yellow flame in incomplete combustion. The yellow being the indication of carbon soot or ionized carbon. Let's look at the equations now. First off, for complete combustion, burning first of all our eight carboned molecule, also called octane. So if I take that, um, and it's in a liquid form, I'm going to combine it with oxygen, and I'll produce carbon dioxide and water. This would be a gas. Um, if we're at standard conditions, this would be a liquid, and this would be a gas. To balance the combustion equations, um, I recommend doing it the following way. Let's begin with the carbon. The first thing you would do is put eight here to balance them. Then I would balance hydrogen second. 18 would mean nine here. Total up your oxygens. So we've got 16 plus nine, 25 oxygens present. So now I come back to my oxygen and that would require then 25 over two. So that would be the equation for the complete combustion of one mole of our fuel. If, however, you wanted to make this a balanced equation and one mole wasn't specified, you would then double everything. So in that case, you would have a coefficient of two here. This would cancel. This would then become 16, and this would then become 18. So that would be just a balanced chemical equation, but not specified for one mole. Let's take a look now at um, the ethanol. So it's CH3, CH2, OH. Now it's also a liquid. We are going to combine it with our oxygen gas. And let's look at our products. I'm going to remove this just to create a little bit more space. So again, complete combustion, we're going to make carbon dioxide gas and H2O liquid. Again, can't balance the carbons. Two on this side, two on this side. Our hydrogens, there's a total of six, three, two, and the one. So that requires then three here. Totaling my oxygens then, I have seven oxygens on this side. There's one present there, so I'm gonna need a three here to balance. So those represent complete combustion, again, producing carbon dioxide and water. So let's move on now to an example of incomplete combustion. So let's take our same octane fuel. We'll combine it with oxygen. And instead of producing carbon dioxide this time, we'll produce some carbon and we'll make some carbon monoxide. And we'll still produce our H2O liquid. Carbon monoxide is a gas and carbon soot, a solid. To balance this equation, there's a wide variety of answers. I'm gonna present but one. So let's start with hydrogen in this case. With 18 of them, that would then require nine water molecules. Now, as far as the eight carbons go, I can divide that eight carbon up any way I wish. I could have one in seven or seven in one. Um, 
I'm just going to choose randomly here four and four. As I say, this is but one solution. Uh, oh, sorry, I should get the states in here. Let's do that. Now, um, the oxygen balance, let's determine how many oxygens I have. I've got four from the carbon monoxide, and I've got nine for a total then of 13 oxygens. So uh, that requires then 13 over 2, O2. So that would be balance for the combustion of one mole of my fuel. Um, if the question simply asked for it to provide a balanced equation, I can't have a fraction. So like the on above, I would double everything to then get rid of that. Now what causes something to burn incompletely? We can usually trace it down to two reasons. The first reason could be there's a limited supply of oxygen. Some of you might have used a Meckler burner, um, something like this one. And by turning that knob at the bottom, you can change the amount of air and hence oxygen getting into your flame. That allows you to change it from a blue flame to a yellow flame and back and forth. As you tighten it, you reduce the amount of air and hence oxygen producing a yellow flame. Another factor that can lead to incomplete combustion is the percentage of carbon. If it tends to be high, you tend to get incomplete combustion. In our particular example here, octane, our hydrocarbon, that contains 84% carbon. Whereas if we look at our ethanol, it, on the other hand, is 52% carbon. As a result, this one is more likely to undergo incomplete combustion. So that's it. Combustion is the burning of an element or a compound in the presence of oxygen. Thanks for watching.